So okay. with that being said, I, I'm Tom Gandhi, and what I'm going to do is share with you the, the lines that we represent. And I'm going to do it at a, with, a, with a real top down, top approach, meaning I don't expect you to walk away from this presentation able to quote things, but I expect you to walk away from this presentation and have a, have a comfort with the lines that we represent and how I can work with you. Great. So Southern Market Share has been around since 2002. Our whole job is to help salespeople like yourself solve their customers' material handling issues as they relate to the manufacturers that we represent. And this is a list of the manufacturers that we represent. Now, what should be very important for you to know is that all of these manufacturers only sell through distribution. Yep. We, not, we don't sell direct. I mean, we do not sell direct, yes. We only go through distribution. So you will never find me at an end user account without a distributor pulling me through the account. Okay. And personally, I love end user calls. I don't get to do enough of them because I can't, you know, guys only bring me in when they absolutely need the help. But I consider myself a guide. I consider myself that person that's gonna help make you look good in front of your customer and make a sale. So I'm trying to make you quote unquote, the hero to your customer when we, when we make a call together. That's my whole goal behind it. And so all of these manufacturers need your support. They're not gonna get any sales unless we have distributors out there making it happen. And Within this category, I always break these lines up into three categories. We've got assembly type products, and these are products that are used where stuff is being made. We've got products that are used for storage and handling. So that's where stuff's moved and stored. And then we've got products that are used in the facility and warehouse aspects. And again, I'm gonna take you through each of these today. We may spend more time on some than others, but can you give you a good handle of what we've got and how we can work together in the future? Okay, great. So we'll start with Presto. Now, Presto is a scissor lift stacker and tilt table manufacturer located in Manila, Arkansas. So we're an American manufacturer. We can do customs of anything and everything. Our lift table range, and lift tables represent about $150 million a year to this marketplace in, in America. So we range anywhere from 500 pound capacity up to 120,000 pounds standard capacity in our book. So there's not a lift table we can't make for you. Our lift tables can go up as high as 40 feet in the air. And most lift tables are electric hydraulic, which means they work off of a motor <clears throat> that, that's electric that pumps fluid into a set of cylinders. The cylinders expand and it takes the lift table up and down. That's about 85% of what we sell lift table wise. We have a small percentage of our sales that are pneumatic lift tables, which are tables that have airbags that work off of compressed air. Now there's limitations to these and I'm not gonna get into all of it, but the important part for you to know is, doesn't matter what type of lift table somebody needs, we can provide it for you. Our capacities and our range is, is unsurpassed in the industry. Now, what does a lift table do? A lot of people, can see the obvious. It brings work up to a worker. We're focused on ergonomics. These guys, they don't, they're not going to hurt their backs. They're not going to strain. They're not going to bend over to do their job as much. Safety people love that aspect of it. But what a lot of people can overlook sometimes is this is technically a productivity aid because the less time that this operator is bending over to get the work, he's spending over here doing his job. So if we can eliminate five seconds for every piece he takes off a pallet throughout the day, there can be huge savings in some of these manufacturing plants. So if you think about it, if you have a pallet with 100 pieces on it, you bend over 100 times, it takes you an average of five to seven seconds each time you bend over. You're doing three pallets a day, five days a week, starting doing the math, there's tremendous amount of value that he can add over here where he's adding value to, to the product in the environment that he works in. So safety, and so when we start talking to those production people, we're gonna talk about the savings, the more throughput, those types of things for them. Now, lift tables can also bring work up to be worked on. So here we're, we're bringing up a table, raising up a cabinet. This guy can do some assembly work, some repair work, doesn't have to bend over. Just much more comfortable for him to do his job. It's gonna be more efficient. It's probably gonna be more productive probably gonna do better quality work as well. 
by not having to bend over, strain, and get worn out throughout the day. We like to talk about turntables on lift tables because you have to walk around that pallet, even if you raise it up, you're still wasting a lot of time walking. So here we can put a turntable, it's manual, or it could be powered rotation. So you can just stay in one spot and rotate that load around for the operator. Some other common things we'll put on them, gravity conveyor, powered conveyor on top of our lift tables. We'll do custom fixturing on top of our lift tables. Here's a V cradle to, to secure this roll so it doesn't roll around. And again, we're raising it up so these operators can put this part of the, um, the piece of equipment, the mandrel, in through the core, pick it up a lot easier without damaging it, without having to bend, stretch to do their work. And then this picture showing a lift table that has what we call a bellows guard, accordion skirt underneath it, the black and yellow part. Safety people like accordion skirts because they act as a visual guide to the operators not to put their hand or feet underneath the lift table. The lift table itself meets all OSHA and ANSI regulations without it, but this is just a, an additional visual aid for them to, hey, be careful. Tom, is, is, that, is that something new? Because I'm familiar with lift tables, but I've never seen that before. That's neat. Is that something fairly new? No, I wouldn't say it's new. It's, it's something that you're only going to find on lift tables that are in typically, and I use the word typically, larger production facilities, meaning okay. a general mode of BMW oh, okay. requirement on all their lifts. People sure. that have a big safety initiative. So this skirt is about a $700 adder. It, it's not inexpensive. Sure. Um, in, you know, so people that, that buy them usually have an initiative that say they need them. The other place where we will sell these from our perspective, we like to see these put on lift tables that are going to be in a real nasty environment. Let's say there's an environment where there's a lot of metal shavings that could fall underneath the lift table or rivets or screws that get thrown around. We've, we've seen those environments. Those items can get underneath the lift table in the roller track and can cause yeah, damage. That makes sense. This, yep. this, this skirt will protect it. So from our perspective, that's the times when we'll start to recommend it and start to talk about it well and then there's also some other options we, we have fire retardant versions of this and we do have what's called a safety skirt which is one that you can't push through that that's extremely expensive to put on a lift table it's really overkill quite honestly and here's a great example this, this was done at a manufacturing plant here in, in greenville south carolina that makes cars called bmw and what we've got here is we've got a lift it shows us they've got the skirt then they've got some gravity roller conveyor and then we did some special fixturing for them. So these loops are something they can hold on to when they go to grab these totes to pull them on and off of the lift. And then this is a brake release. So the rollers are self-braking until you pull this lever and you, you unengage the brake on the rollers. You pull that lever and it allows the, the load to roll on and off of the lift table. Interesting. So, huh. Yeah, those are things that we start to try to take it a little bit further. I mean, we could have just sold them a regular lift table with conveyor. But we really like to understand what they're doing, work with them to supply something that's going to meet all of their requirements. We can put a tilt table on top of our lift table so you can lift the load and tilt it towards the operator. And then we can take and put our lift tables on, on casters with batteries so that this is a portable lift table. Roll it around the factory, go and get loads, move them around. We can add conveyor turntables skirts, all that same stuff can be added to these lift tables that are portable. Now, our lift tables have a five, seven, 10 inch lowered height, depending on which one you're looking at. And these lift tables need to be loaded and unloaded with a forklift or a stacker. And I'll show you stackers a little bit later on in this presentation. But you're gonna have some customers that are gonna say, hey, I need a lift table that goes all the way down to the floor. And we've got that. We can do it without or with a turntable. And these units go all the way down to the floor. This one has a small ramp, so you can mm -hmm. transition on and off of it. They allow you to not have to use that forklift or stacker to load it. Now, they're a little bit more expensive, and they take up a lot more foot, footprint. So you always have to be careful when you're talking about these floor-level lift tables. You have to be careful with that footprint they require and make sure the customer has enough room on the plant floor. Now, this is a newer series in, in, the, in the sense of us promoting it and really talking about it. This is a worker access platform. 
This has handrails. It's designed for an operator to stand on the lift and raise himself up to do some work. So most people can think of a genie lift for maintenance. We're, we're a lift to bring people up when they're doing assembly work, welding work on tall stuff. And usually it's fixed. We, we can make them portable if you want to, but we're bringing the work up to the worker. So if you can imagine somebody making refrigerators, the guy working on the freezer needs to be at a different height than the guy working on the pan at the bottom. So these can elevate and take people up and down while they do their assembly work. And then these worker access platforms can even be designed with telescoping platforms. So this would go up and then it transverses to the right or telescopes out past the footprint to get the operator closer to what they're working on. And again, we'll guide you through this whole process. Just know that we can pick people up to get to the work as well as pick the work up to be done. Uh, Presto has a full line of dock lifts. And where a dock lift is used is if you have a, a building that doesn't have um, elevated docks positions. So it would be an older facility here in the South, or maybe uh, somebody who's doing work out of maybe a retail type environment that needs to load and unload trucks pretty frequently. That's where you'll see a dock lift being used. And this will raise a forklift up or a pallet jack up to get in the back of a truck to load and unload it. Got stationary and portable versions of that. Then the next series, moving away from lift tables, we get into container tilting and tilters. And personally, I love container tilters because here in the South, we have a ton of manufacturing that uses these wire baskets, the plastic cork, the plastic boxes that collapse, these metal bins, and they all throw their parts into them or either put their parts into them or take their parts out of them. And so when you're taking the parts out or putting them in, we can tilt the top of this basket and at 28 and a half inches off the ground and we actually rotate it towards the operator so the open part is right there facing the operator and all he or she has to do is reach right in there and grab the parts these are infinitely adjustable from zero to 85 degrees so the operator controls the degree of tilt and they're real back savers they're real productivity improvement by putting these in place the price point is between five and seven five and six thousand dollars and when you compare that to the cost of a lift and a tilt table, like a lot of people want to put in here, it's nearly half the, half the price of that. And in addition to getting product out, you can also use it for packing. So in this packaging operation, this box is on a pallet. It used to just sit on the floor and she'd bend over to put all the boxes in it as she filled this out, multiple layers. So we picked it up, we tilted it towards her. So now she just turns and puts those smaller boxes inside that bigger box. That's really kind of neat, I think. We've got a full line of 90 degree tilters where we can just take product and upend it, stand it up on end. We can customize the platforms as well. This particular one has a V cradle to it. This one actually has some fixturing. Zoom in, you can see it where we're holding. We built this fixturing to hold this cabinet as it was being built. Again, we're, we're gonna work with you to try and get a solution that's gonna meet your customer specific requirements. We have a a series of pallet positioning equipment. Packaging people do really, really well with this. So this is called a self-leveling pallet positioner. So the way it works is either you, you pressurize the system with air or you put a series of springs into it. And then these have a turntable so you can rotate the load. They've got fork pockets so that you can move it around. It doesn't need to be bolted to the ground. It works within its own footprint. And these will go up and down as you add weight to them or take weight off. So the concept here is we're taking the operation and the interface away from the operator. So here she just has to work on palletizing a load. So you think at the end of an assembly line, the beginning of an assembly line where it's manual and they're taking boxes and putting them on a pallet or maybe taking pallets, loads of boxes and depalletizing them. These are great pieces of equipment for that type of an operation. Interesting. And they're all self-contained. The air moves back and forth in the airbag unit between a holding chamber and the airbag and the spring. Obviously, the spring just compresses and contracts. We can self-level up to 4,500 pounds with these units. And they're very economical, around a $2,500 price point for us. Tom, do you need an external compressor for these or is it included? So let me, I'll back up a slide. That's a very good question. So on this airbag unit right here, there's a yep. tank here and you fill this tank up just like you put air in your, your car tire. Okay, understand, got it, yep, yep. And it's that, 
yeah, you don't need it again unless the only time you would go back and touch this, let's say you're working with 4,500 pounds, fully loaded pallet, and then your load changes, and now it's only a 2,000 pound fully loaded pallet, you'd have to take some air out. Okay, got it. With the spring, you'd have to change your spring configurations to make it work. And what's really nice about these is we find that people that use these in their operation, they have multiple needs, meaning they'll buy three, four, 10 of these units sometimes. And then Presto has a full line of turntables. So this just rotates a load. You saw it earlier on top of a lift table. We can put them on the floor where you can roll on and off of them with cards. Here's one that we, uh, we did that's um, two and a half inches off the ground. It's just a disc that rotates. And then this last one over here is really cool. This is one we did for BMW. The turntable's in the center, and then we built some wings off to the side to catch the casters. So we can roll these carts onto it and rotate the cart around. And we did a couple of different sizes for them. This one's 48 by 36. And they just had their, their product up top. And they just need to be able to get to both sides of it. We, they also had a cart that was 72 by 36, and we did a wider one for them for that. So kind of some neat applications. And then Presto has a full line of stackers. And these stackers are just portable lifts. Designed to can pick up product, you can use them in maintenance areas with a platform, maybe pick up um, a motor, move a motor around for maintenance. And then we go all the way up to handling full loads in and out of pallet rack. Now we're not replacing a forklift, but we're just kind of complementing a forklift. Maybe we're loading a lift table in an area where they don't want their forklift to go, or maybe we're moving pallets in the pallet rack in a tool crib area where they don't want a forklift or have room for a forklift. We've also got units that are counterweighted, meaning there's no legs out in front of them, so that you can uh, get right up against the piece of equipment. Now, this isn't designed for a full pallet, but this is designed for tool and die and fixture handling in and out of CNC machines. And then we can even make these units work off of AC electric rather than batteries. Typically, that's going to be in a stationary application. And then some options that we do, we can make pans on top of our lift so you can roll carts onto them put conveyor on them. We do a lot of custom platforms, booms and hooks and rams on our stackers. We have a drum handling option to handle drums. And then we've got a line of fully powered stackers. So this is power drive, electric lift, 3,000 pounds or less. <clears throat> and again, we're not trying to replace that forklift. We're just trying to complement where that forklift is being used. We got into this industry because people need to load and unload lift tables. And this is a great addition to our offering by offering these units. And then the last thing that we've got through Presto is a lift stick. And this is a 20 inch by 20 inch footprint, lifts up to about 440 pounds. It's got a platform or forks on it. It's real lightweight, it weighs about 100 pounds and it's real easy to maneuver. And these come into play when you start getting into plants that are like, hey, I've got a 60 pound box that I need to move around or a tote that weighs 80 pounds. They don't wanna get a real big heavy piece of equipment to move it. This is a real lightweight piece. You can go in and out of doorways, go right up to pieces of equipment to perform the task and to get the work. And we offer some pretty standard or static end effectors for it. We can do V cradles, booms and hooks, rams. We have a, we have a paper roll handler with a core expander. It's all manual, but very, very basic. Now, when you get into something a little bit more custom off the front of it, we work with Lift Track. And Lift Track manufactures a transporter, same footprint size as Presto, but we do custom end effecting off the front of it. So everything off the front of these units is going to be customized. Here's one we designed for handling a roll. We're taking it eye to the sky and loading it into a machine right off a pallet. Here's one with a custom V cradle that allows you to rotate the load, side shift the load, and spin the load. We put some big 10 inch casters on it to make it easy to roll. These lift track units will handle up to 600 pounds of weight. And really where we're putting these lift track is where we're taking the lifting that a human has to do away from them and providing them a tool that'll do it within their work cell. So here we're picking up totes and dumping them. Here we're picking up a roll and we can rotate it and we can spin it. Here's one where we're picking up a, a, a some film that needs to be slitted. We just did a very simple capture the ends with a fixture on it. Here's one where we're picking up reels for Tyco. 
and we're going into the center and picking it up off a of pallet and moving it over to load a machine. And what's really neat about this one is when we were designing it, we were afraid that these 500 pound rolls would be very difficult for the female operators and some of the male operators to push off the ramp. We put rollers in the top of it. So it just provides a little bit of assist when you go to push it off. Then we designed an end stop that would work manually. So you flip this lever 90 degree, or 180 degrees and it flipped up the end on it. Then we even designed it where this end effector tilted 10 degrees up or down. So the floor wasn't level, it wasn't a problem. They could still line it up to the machine and go in and pick it up. Here's one, a platform. They were doing some assembly work. They had to flip the part over that they were assembling. We put a boom and a hook at the top. So they just raise it up, sling it, and flip it. Manual clamping device rather than a powered clamp. Here's a telescoping boom. It goes out 20 inches. This, this swivels 270 degrees. This particular arm right here is picking up a 55 pound part. It's a sub-assembly for um, electrical cabinet. So we pick it up off the pallet. We bring it over to the cabinet. We push this arm, <clears throat> excuse me, extend this arm into the cabinet, 18 inches, and then they assemble it. So where somebody was having to hold it and another person was having to screw it in place, we minimize that operation. We're picking a pallet up, turning it 90 degrees so you can staple a box to the top of it. Here's one where we've got a, this was an electrical panel for square D, two foot by three foot. Got built out with all this electrical componentry on top of it. We designed an end effector, started here and goes all the way back, two feet deep, so that we could go down over the top of this electrical panel after it got built out. We wouldn't touch any of the components that were all sitting in here. Clamp onto it, roll it over, and stick it 18 inches deep into a cabinet for them. This was a three-person operation. We took it to a one-man operation. We're grabbing an exhaust for an automotive manufacturer, grabbing a windshield for a bus manufacturer and putting the windshield in the bus. Here we're grabbing something. We don't even know what it was. They wouldn't share that with us. But here we've got a, it's like your arm. This is your shoulder. Here's your arm, your elbow, your hand, your fingers. Full manipulation, just like your arm. We could go in, into a cabinet and around a corner. It's really what, what it was designed for. So all of these end effectors are held on with two pins. So we can quickly take this end effector off and put a different end effector on there. So if you think about a maintenance guy that maybe has several pieces of equipment to maintain, they're all different. He needs different end effectors to get into each one. It's no problem. We can design our end effectors to do it. We can also shorten the legs to allow you to get further into something and then add some counterweight to the back of it. And again, these lift tracks are all one-offs. I'm here to guide you from start to finish on these projects as part of my job. We've got two lines of anti-fatigue matting. We have Apache Mills, and Apache Mills is, a, is either a foam mat or a rubber mat, with a vinyl mat with foam on top of it, or a rubber mat like you see here. These are your economical mats. These mats sell for $3 a square foot. You're gonna compete with a catalog house with these mats. Different shapes, different sizes, different configurations for different environments. We even have an ESD and an anti-static version of our mats. So we have a mat that come in rolls. They could come in a two by three mat if you needed it to. Um, Design at a price point that people are used to paying. We have a second line of matting called Millicon that is in a 20 inch by 20 inch tile. Now this is a premium mat. It sells for around $12 a square foot. This is a mat that's gonna last a whole lot longer than that foam mat. Though it's a green product because it's made from recycled PVC. It's heat resistant up to 850 degrees. It's chemical and oil resistant, and we can create any size or any shape we want. And it's a true ergonomic product. We're creating a, an ergonomic floor when we put this in. This is the underside of the mat. We have 144 compression columns that are designed to keep you up on top of the work surface. Interesting. And you can see it looks real nice when it goes in. This was a race team. They had an image they wanted to portray, so we sold them our mats. This is in an oily environment, and it's actually got a grit surface on top of the mat. So it's an impregnated, almost like a 60 core sandpaper on top of the mat. So that's our anti-slip. And what we also show here is that you can see back here where these legs go through, that we're actually cut our mat out around where those legs come down. So our mat wraps around the leg. 
Okay. You're not affecting the integrity of our product. It's still going to lay flat. And we warrant you for 10 years saying this product is going to look the same, react the same, give you the same ergonomic benefits 10 years from now. And because we keep you up on top of the work surface, we can roll carts onto it. So this person has to roll these carts up to these workstations to do some work. So we put in this nice long cell. It's nice and straight. It doesn't walk. It looks nice. And you can roll your carts on. Um, here's one that we saw earlier with the container tilter. When we were in there, all their mats were burned and melted and just terrible shape. We started talking to them. This is a 350 degree part. If he drops it on the foam mat, it burns. Our product heat resistant. We were able to come in. Interesting. I'll sail while we were in there talking to them. And again, different shapes, different sizes. You can roll pallet jacks and carts over it. We have a 10 year warranty. No one else is offering that in our industry. And then Milligan does have a full line of chairs for where people are sitting in their workplace. These have a lifetime warranty on them, including the cylinder. We have chairs you sit in. We have what's called a sit stand for just temporary relief. And then we do custom chairs as well. Then the last product that we represent in the assembly arena is Trested. Trested makes workstations and packaging stations. These are typically height adjustable, so different heights for different operators. It's powered up and down. It can be a manual or electric. And our whole concept when we're laying out a work cell is to give you tool, tool rails up or ahead to hold your tools and your balancers, shelves to put your parts on, ways to hang. This is a vacuum system this guy has, a way to hang his vacuum system. We're trying to get everything he works with up off the work surface. So what he's working on is what's on the work surface. And this packaging station will kind of depict that. Everything's up off the work surface, either above it or below it. Printer below it, computer stand, stands to hold our parts, hold envelopes, hold packaging material. Whatever you need, we can design it. We have hundreds upon hundreds of accessories that can hang off of our uprights. We've got a really neat online configurator that allows you to build out the bench online with your customer and add and take away options as you see fit. And then Trested also has a line of tool board holders. These are vertical storage to hold tools and belts and other things along those lines. We can make them portable where you're hanging tools on an assembly line rather than putting them in a toolbox. A whole lot easier to see them, a whole lot easier to get to the parts. And just here are some standard configurations, and we can do custom configurations of all of that. Now we're going to move over into the storage and um, handling areas. Okay. Quantum storage systems, parts bins, storage bins, totes, boxes. Quantum is the largest American manufacturer of containers and bins. Our manufacturing facility is in Miami, Florida, and we compete with Lewis Benz, Acro Mills, you name it, we can cross it over and sell you ours. And the one thing that I will tell you is a lot of people think of this as an item that people are going to buy out of a catalog, which is true, but we can give you pricing that will allow you to compete with the Globals, the U-Lines, those guys that are selling it with no value added to it. Our owner of our company will tell you, do not lose an order to a catalog house. You come to Tom, come to myself, and we're going to get you a price to compete because we want them buying bins from you. And to be quite honest, it's a sale that doesn't come back to haunt you because there's no moving parts to it. It's pretty simple. It works when it drop ships in. It's, it's, an, it's an easy sale. So we have all different sizes, shelf bins, parts bins, clear bins. We can provide systems for the shelving to hold the bins, cabinets to put the bins in, the system that maybe is portable for the application. This is a louvered panel that gets screwed to a wall you can hang bins on. We have large bins that you can use for order picking in a distribution environment. We've got divider boxes that you can cube out. A lot of people in the electronics world will use these for work in process. Distribution totes in a closed system like a Walgreens or a CVS, they use these to send orders to their stores. We have the big plastic bulk box that collapses down as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then a whole bunch of other variety of complete storage packages, complete storage systems, whether it's flip out, tip out, little plastic carts. And then the second part of quantum is wire shelving. 
Now, wire shelving is really big in pharmaceutical and food applications, but we mm -hmm. do a really good job in industrial and distribution with these. They don't collect dust. They, they adjust on one inch centers. So they're easy to put together, easy to reconfigure, and they're economical. Come in different finishes, put them up on carts. Now we've got a mobile cart that you can adjust the shelves on one inch center. So in a distribution center, they like these because they can buy it, set it up to the, for today's product, knowing that when that product changes, they can just reconfigure the cart real easy for the new Great. side yep. products. So we got shorter carts as well. We've got uh, units that'll lock, so you can have security and lock product up. We've got linen for the hospitality world. And then we can take these wire shelves and make mobile shelving systems that are on a track or an overhead track, floor track or overhead track. And what this allows us to do is one aisle for multiple rows of shelving. So we can store more in less area. So those customers that are running out of space, and they've got a back stock room, this is an option for them. We've got some steel shelving as well. We can do this with or without bins. And then the next line is mid-states. And mid-states is a steel fabricator. We can make anything you need out of steel. So whether that's an order picking cart, shipping container, a special cart with some uh, tool storage on it, a platform cart that rotates and has conveyor, bar stock cart, custom expanded cart, or even trailers. And then we have a full line of work platforms. So on the Presto line, you saw height adjustable worker access platforms. This is a fixed height worker access platform. This particular one was two feet off the ground. There's some steps leading up to it. There's handrails so either he or she doesn't fall off. And then there's an assembly line that was running right here when they got installed that allowed them to get their operators up that two feet higher so they could do their job at a better height. We put this on casters so they could wheel it around as needed. Then we've got a full line of trailers that can get tugged or moved throughout a factory behind a forklift or with a tugger. Um, these can be designed so that they'll self-track behind you, meaning you could take a whole train of them down a row and turn and they would all follow in the same path. Capacities anywhere from 1,000 up to 150,000 pounds we can design. And we can do the same thing out of stainless steel. Mid-States has a full capability to make stainless steel products. So if you need something that's washable, food grade, we can make those for you as well. Then the next line is New Age. New Age does the same thing as Mid-States except out of aluminum. So we're gonna do aluminum pallets. We're gonna do aluminum pallet stands, aluminum carts. Now, why would somebody want something out of aluminum rather than steel? It has to do with weight. This cart weighs 75 pounds. A steel cart's gonna weigh 350 pounds. <laughs> yep. Whole lot of weight difference. Now, we recognize that our price point is gonna start a little bit higher, but um, I'll show you in a second how to work around that because aluminum is more expensive than steel. Another reason for aluminum, it's gonna be washed down. You can wash this cart down. This cart can get wet. It's not gonna rust. You could store it outside. It's no problem for us. Also, this isn't this cart is not painted, so it's not going to scratch and get chipped up. It's going to look good for a longer period of time. And to some customers, that means a whole lot to them. Then what we like to do is we like to, to take our standard cart, which is the one I showed you on the other page, and then start to add some value proposition to your to your call with your customer. Well, number one, if your customer asks you for a cart and you start talking to them about aluminum carts. I guarantee you no one else out there is talking aluminum cards. You're really going to differentiate yourself. So that's a good thing. Then number two, we're going to take him and he may see something in our book and or online or have a feel for what he wants. And we're going to start talking to him going, hey, maybe we could angle these shelves a bit more for you. It might be easier for you to get your lightweight products in and out. Maybe we can add a center pivot wheel so you can turn at the end of the aisle a little bit better. Maybe we're going to add a cup holder and a, and a tool gun holder. Maybe we'll add a clipboard holder, an iPad holder. Or maybe we'll make it so you can pick from both sides. Put a tow hitch on it so you can pull it. Put a shelf that pulls out from the bottom. We're going to talk to your customer, maybe make the shelves a little longer so we can put four bins on there rather than three. We're going to try and work with him to design a cart, customize a cart to meet his or her specific needs. And we're doing a couple of things there. Number one, customer buy-in from the beginning. He's helping design it. 
they get a lot more excited when they when they help design something and they start to take ownership before they buy it. The other thing is we're set up like a job shop. So for us to angle the shelves a bit more, it's not gonna cost much at all. For us to add a tool holder, no big deal. If you go back to that steel fabricator who runs an assembly line, it's a big deal for him. He's gonna charge you a lot. And when he starts charging a lot, we charge a little bit more, we reduce or eliminate that price gap between us. So really, we're doing a value for our customer by designing something that's going to work for his or her needs better. And we're actually helping to lock out some of our competition. So pick carts, ladder carts is another big category for us with New Age. These are carts that have ladders on it so you can step up and get into product that's in shelving up high. And we're doing the same thing. Can we put fork pockets on it so you can take this on and off of a mezzanine? We add a tool holder for you. Can we make the shelves a little longer and slant them? You tell us, Mr. Customer, what you need, and we're going to work to design that for you. And then the last big mover for New Age is what we call an, an order picking cage. In distribution centers where they have good stored in pallet rack that they have to get and pick for orders, they buy man up order pickers. And that's a basically looks like a forklift that takes a guy up into the pallet rack to do his or her job. Now, what we do with this is this is a cage that gets mounted onto that where most people will put a pallet. And this allows them to put more goods on it, stack the goods higher, it's not gonna fall off. And we're doing the same thing. We're gonna customize it. Tell us what you need and we're gonna design it. Doors that open, shelves that flip up. Maybe you need an extended platform on it so there's a little bit more workspace for the operator. Oh, and by the way, this platform on our order picking cage will line up to the height of the platform on the order picker itself. We'll design it to do that. So cubby holes so you can pick multiple orders and keep them separate. Whatever the customer needs, we can design a unit to handle that. Then from there, we're gonna move into some facilities types of product. So the first one we're gonna talk about is Handle It. And Handle It makes guardrail. And there are millions of miles of guardrails sold every single year. And this is another easy sale if your customer knows that you offer it because they have to protect their people and their processes from getting hit by forklifts and other powered equipment. So you'll see here, we're protecting some pallet rack, we're protecting a, an operator work area, we're protecting some equipment, protecting a person. Now this is, rail is offered an 18 inch high or 43 inch high, and this will withstand a impact from a 10,000 pound forklift at four miles per hour. It's designed to hmm. stop that forklift. You'll see people create walkways to make sure that their, their people are kept safe when they're walking throughout the factory or guests. See, we can put gates on the end of them, so you have to swing a gate open when you get to the end of the Nile. Here we're protecting a container tilter with some guardrail. Here we're protecting a process from getting hit, protecting water mains and electrical outlets or electrical panels. We've got a full line of options such as lift out rail so you don't have to bolt it in place to the gates I mentioned earlier, to 45 degree angle as well. We've got end of rack protection. Yep. It protects pallet rack from those forklifts running into it. It's a real easy sale if anyone ever has any pallet rack that gets hit. I mean, this pallet rack could easily fall. We didn't have some rack protection if it got hit hard enough. Plus, repairing one of these uprights is very expensive compared to putting another piece of steel down. We've got post protectors if they just want to protect it for one position. A couple of different sizes and shapes of these. Bollards protect single points of impact rather than the guardrail where we're designed to go a whole length from the run. We've got an angle guard for the floor where you can put it down on the floor to protect carts and pallet jacks from running into a building, maybe running into some chemicals that you have stored in some pallet rack. We've got some overhead door track guard that protects that door track from getting hit. And we've got column protectors to protect the columns from getting hit. These are plastic column protectors that you run into, they just they, they crush. Then the um, last thing that Handle It makes is shrink wrappers. So we have a full line of shrink wrappers. They come from Italy. We keep them in stock in our Wisconsin facility. And we've got a full variety of, of um, units that will handle anywhere from your person that's wrapping two times a day to your person that's doing 200 an hour. We've got a full offering of shrink wrappers. Then we've got a line of modular offices. 
And a modular office is basically a building that shows up on a in a box that gets assembled on site. So rather than having a traditional stick built, you buy an office, you buy a machine enclosure and equipment enclosure. It goes together like an erector set, but it has the same feel as a as the room you're in, your office that you're in. It has a drop ceiling, it's got walls. These walls are constructed of a polystyrene center for insulation and soundproofing. We've got sheetrock on either side of that. And then we put a vinyl wrap on the outside of it so it's easy to clean and keep, keep fingerprints off. We have a raceway which acts like our studs. So this is every four foot. It holds a panel in place. So there's a panel here and there'll be a panel here. Holds the walls up. And then it also acts as an electrical channel for us to run our electrical and our data down. So now why would somebody buy a modular office rather than just doing stick built or traditional construction? Are they are they air are they air conditioned? Is there individual air conditioned to them? Yeah, okay, that's that's one big reason. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so here these are individual air conditioners. Oh yeah, I see that. Yep. Yep. Number one, this office right here showed up on a Monday. By Wednesday afternoon, they were moving into it. It took two days to put that together. If you had stick built this, it would take months of people yep. coming and going. So time. We can compress that distraction on site. When I say that. Whenever you or I walk into an end user account, people always stop and look and say, who in the world is this? What are they doing and what do they want? They're distracted. Well, when we're there, we're only there for two days for this install. GC's coming and going for months. So there's a lot more distraction. There's a lot more dust and debris created by traditional construction because you got to sand, you got to paint. You, can have you need permits to too. Yep. You're, yeah. Yep. You're going to probably need a permit. So that's that's another disadvantage to traditional construction. The other disadvantage is, let's say he wants to move this building to another part of his factory or his DC. Can't do that with stick built. You can take ours down and move it. You can add on to ours. So if you needed to add another five, five feet over here, no problem. We move the wall and add some more panels. We extend our can extend that office real easily. Um, and then an, another big advantage is the tax advantage. You stick build something, you depreciate it for 30 years. Thanks to Section 179, allows you to depreciate equipment in the year you buy it. So this is considered a piece of equipment. It can be depreciated in the year that you make your purchase. Interesting, interesting, good point. So some examples, I mean, and we can do anything that you can do with regular construction. Two-story, really big offices. Here's a big, this was actually a packaging room we designed for a process to keep it contained away from the rest of the factory. Roll up doors, man doors, double doors in them, no problem. Vision tower up on a mezzanine for the supervisor to sit so we can see what's going on. Here's one where we put a room in. We didn't want to waste that space, so we made it load bearing so you could store product up top. Here's a tall wall separating two areas. We put a high speed door in it. Here's clean room. We can do a clean room. And again, we're going to guide you through this whole process from start to installation. So we can help you lay it out, design what the person needs based on what they're trying to do, all the way through to getting you an installer to put it in because we know this isn't what you do every day. Conference room, board rooms, lunch rooms, break rooms, kitchen areas, bathrooms, guard shacks outside, control rooms outside or inside to control the process. And these can be put on a forklift face so they can be moved around real easy. The next facility product we have is Sopers. And Sopers makes a soft wall. This is a, this is a, a barrier wall out of vinyl material that hangs from the ceiling down to the floor. It doesn't have to go all the way to the floor, doesn't have to go all the way to the ceiling, could be a hybrid of that. But why would you need a soft wall? Well, visual control, odor control, fume control, temperature control, sound control, dust and dirt control are all examples of why somebody might put a soft wall in. Yep. Hmm. These hang real easy, easy assembly of it. It's not a permanent structure, it's just a beam clamp that we, we have hooks and we just hang it from the beam clamps. Or if we're in between trusses, we have a spanner rail that hangs. We hang everything down that way. They go together real easy. They have a real clean look. Here's, here's a nice little package room we created for somebody. You can see we cut around every, everything at the top and seal it up real nice and neat. 
This particular one we had two walls coming off of two existing walls. We did strip curtains for the entrance points and exit points on the building. Here's a welding room we created for somebody, put the welding vision panel in there so they don't have to worry about the art of the welders. Um, this particular one has man doors in it, has roll up doors and sliding doors. We did a turnkey. This particular one, we enclosed the mezzanine for temperature control. They wanted to heat and cool the top of that mezzanine for a production process. This was a fabrication area that they wanted to contain. They put some air filtration equipment inside of there. We did some clear material so they could have light transfer back and forth. And then we also put tinted strip curtains all along the bottom so they can come and go out of this room anywhere they want. They're not tied down to any doors. This, this was a really great design when it turned out. We actually kept it up off the ground 18 inches so that the air could be brought in from the bottom and get flow up so they have fresh makeup air coming in, no problem. Here's one where we had an existing wall. They had dust that was floating over that wall. They didn't want to box these people in, so we hung clear material so they could have that light transfer and just that feeling of not being in a, in a box. Now, most of these so far have been all stationary. We can also do retractable systems. So this is closed. Here it is open. There's just a rope that hangs down. You pull a, a, it's the rollers that are on an, in an enclosed track at the top, open and close it real easily. Here's an exterior application doing the same thing, but we just put some, some strapping to hold the bottom down to the concrete so it doesn't blow open in the wind. And then we can make the whole room retract. So this was an eight by eight by 30 foot room. And they were doing a process where they had to bring something real big in from overhead. And then when they were doing their work, they had to contain it. So we designed a room, push it back up against the wall, took up seven foot, put your part down and then wrap this around whatever your part was. Another reason for this is somebody may buy one of these is if they're doing a process maybe once an hour, I mean, one hour a day, it's not every day they do it. They don't want to dedicate all that floor space to that process. We can make the room retract out of the way when they're not using it. And then we offer sound containment. We do a lot of sound containment. Got all this equipment here, made a whole bunch of noise. Boom, at the end of the day, we enclosed it, made it look a lot nicer in my opinion. Vision panel so you can see the controls. There's an air inlet here with some fans to bring air in so the equipment doesn't overheat. Here we can contained part of a piece of equipment with our sound material. You see, we got up real tight, we even wrapped around. There's a chute in here, there's electrical cables running back and forth. We sealed it up real nice and tight. The vision panel so they could see in there what's going on. And then we made it so that those sidewalls lifted up so they could do maintenance on the piece of equipment. And then the last one for the sound containment and sofas. This is a room we designed for a customer. He was bringing in a large piece of equipment, a bearing, I think it was, and he brought it in from overhead. So we had to make our doors open all the way up on the front so we could get in. And then we had to make room for the overhead sling to hang down into our area from the crane. And we had to make a power retracting roof. So again, we're an engineering company with Sobers. And we'll guide you through that whole process all the way through the installation. We've got Burner who manufactures air curtains. And what these air curtains do is they blow air down in front of a door opening. You may have felt it at Costco, Sam's Club, some gas stations have them. Yeah. And what we're doing is we're keeping the conditioned air inside the building. We're not allowing it to escape. If that door didn't have one of these, you'd have 100% air loss. With our air curtain, you only have a 20% air loss. This air comes down and 20% of it curls out and 80% of it curls back into the building. These are also designed to keep insects, and dust, and dirt, and wind from entering into facilities. So if you have people that make packaging goods for the food world, maybe for restaurants, they need to have air curtains at their openings or bug screens. Traditionally, we're hanging these over an overhead door with our, with our dealers. And this is usually a door that's either ground level or has a ramp that goes outside into like a scrap yard area or a um, an area perhaps that has trash cans or recycle bins. And what we're doing, just blocking that air from escaping out that opening. Here's one that we mounted vertic um, vertically, shooting the air across. And in this application, 
they actually had an odor on this on this other side of the building from a process that they didn't want coming into the front of their building. So we interesting. Never there. seen one. Never seen one that way vertically. Interesting. Yeah, and they don't work as well vertically, but they are still effective. Hmm. You know, gravity is going to take some of this air, so we kind of have to over overcharge it so it shoots all the way across. And then here's one over a typical retail environment. The next line we've got is, is Amigo, and Amigo makes tuggers and powered equipment. There are a lot of people that are making this type of equipment, but nobody really focuses on the lighter end of it. So we focus on 1,100 pounds of tugging capacity and less. All of our equipment is designed around 1,100 pound capacity. We have a trailer hitch on there. We've got a couple of 12 volt batteries with an electric motor inside of here. Plug it in, 110 power to charge it. Controls are all up here, and we can pull a cart, pull a trailer around as long as it doesn't weigh more than 1,100 pounds through the factory. Price point is around $2,500 for this. Then we can make it a little bit bigger and make a powered platform cart. So now we can move more product around right on the cart itself. This cart can be customized with shelving. We can make it different lengths. We're manufacturing these in Michigan, so we have a lot of flexibility as to what we can do with our cart. Then we've got a people mover. So this particular one is designed for an operator to stand on it and drive through the factory, drive through the warehouse, whatever it may be, just to move around. These go up to six miles per hour. And they, um, again, you can tow a cart behind it. We can put a hitch here and you can pull a cart behind it. You'll get about 30 miles out of a charge with these units. Hmm. Then we've got a version of it with a fixed trailer on the back of it, maybe for some stock picking, moving goods maintenance people as well. They can put their tools on the back of here or their parts that they're working with. This unit's only 22 inches wide, so it'll go through doorways. And you can go right down that aisle and get right up next to that piece of equipment you're working on. And this is only a $3,600 purchase point. Still very economical for what you're getting. And then they even make one with a detachable trailer, so you can buy multiple trailers if you have a picking operation. You can go pick some goods put them on the trailer, drive around, drop that trailer off and grab another trailer and go. Then the last manufacturer we got is Mighty Line. And you see everybody that tapes their floors or paints their floors. They either use that inexpensive nylon tape or they're painting it, which paint is very expensive and very permanent. The nylon stuff is very weak, meaning it doesn't hold up to traffic very well. This is a hybrid. This is an extruded PVC product, and it has a high-tech adhesive back. So it sticks really, really well, goes down like tape, but has the durability of paint. So you can drive carts and forklifts over it all day long and you're not gonna hurt it. The only way you're gonna hurt our product is if you drag pallets across it, you will eventually chip some of our paint or some of our tape up, just like you would chip your, your other product. But what's nice about our product is you can score it and replace that part that gets damaged real easily. So it comes in one to six inch wide rolls, different colors as you can see, different configurations. We have some that glow in the dark, and then we have a whole series of um, signs. We were talking about COVID signs a little bit earlier on. You and I, we you know, maintain your distance, we make those signs. Footprints and arrows, angles, they'll tell you where to put pallets and tees and then dots. And those are the manufacturing lines that, that we represent. Um, you now, I'm going to show you one more thing real quick. I'll show you something on our website. Um, SouthernMarketShare.com is our website. We have a few resources on here, which I'll point out. First one is literature request. If you need literature, you can come here, click on this box. And it'll give you a form to fill out to get as much paper literature as you want. If you're interested in digital, you can go to our online binder. And you can click on the state that you're in and bring up our binder, and it's gonna have literature on all of our manufacturers. No, oh, neat. You can go right into it, get the guide. Here's the piece of the literature you're maybe interested in, and it's gonna offer you the ability to download it right from this site. So you can email it to your customer and share it with them. Do we need a code to get in there or not? No, it, it's, it's available to all. Um, I try not to put pricing out there. I try to just, unless it's list price, um, that way, that way we can share it with anybody. 
Okay. Um, got a few.